What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and now that Operation Steel Wave is finally here, I want to take you through a detailed examination of how the house map has been changed with a specific focus on the tactical implications. I'm not normally one for dirty angles or runouts, but if I'm going to do a map breakdown then why not add some really useful stuff. Since we'll be going into quite a bit of detail, I will be covering this map in a short series of videos rather than one endlessly long video, and today we're going to kick things off on the second floor. Let's go! If I had to summarize the house rework in one sentence, I would simply have to say that for the top two floors, two new rooms have been added to the south, and the basement has had some stuff moved around. On the top floor, you can instantly recognize that the core of the map is identical to before. The northeastern bathroom, master bedroom, walk-in closet, kids' bedroom and upper hallway, which connects the back stairs and the lobby stairs, are essentially untouched in terms of their layout, and even the overall footprint of the former workshop room in the northwest is still the same. With all of these rooms, there are some tactical considerations though. Two of the windows in the bathroom have been closed off, and because of the two rooms added to the south, the kids' bedroom, now renamed car room, and the master bedroom have lost a bunch of their south-facing windows. The three windows facing west over the back stairs have also been changed. They were raised up so that defenders can no longer jump out, and once the barricade has been opened there is no way for them to be boarded back up again. The small windows at the top have been removed so that attackers no longer have a permanent sightline along the hallway, only one of the windows can be opened up, and some metal bars were added to stop attackers being able to swing in. Attackers can still repel above the window to control the back stairs and upper hallway, and of course any occupant in the treehouse can still attempt to lock down the hallway, but this is now far less of a problem than it used to be. Despite the fact that the new treehouse has a new ladder accessible from the north that will allow attackers a relatively safe way of climbing up, countering the treehouse position has never been easier. As a defender, there are a total of four different windows that will allow you to shoot at any attacker skulking around on the treehouse. Of course, there's the back stairs window, but you can also challenge from either the car room or from the pink room. Plus, you can also use the game room window downstairs to get a pretty good view of your enemy. And as if four separate windows weren't enough, you can also jump out through the window in the brand new playroom on the second floor, or run out of the new downstairs music room. From the other side, the treehouse still has some value to the attackers. Not only can you control the upper hallway, but you can also cut off rotation from the pink room to the bathroom hallway, and see the pink room walk-in door, and you can also see into the car and game rooms. Nevertheless, Cover is sparse here, and if anyone stays up here for too long, it's only a matter of time before a defender manages to challenge them from one of the many angles they can use now. Back to the rest of the top floor, and besides the window changes, many of the formerly soft walls have been turned solid and vice versa. The bathroom still has two sections of breachable walls, but nowhere near as many as it used to. All of the parts around the master bedroom doors have been solidified, and the master bedroom door has been made a bit smaller. You know, roughly the size an actual door would be. The northern wall of the walk-in and the west-facing section of the car room have also been converted to brick, which means you won't have to worry about a sniper on the treehouse shooting into the car room anymore. And at the same time, the back stairs are a little safer now, because you can't be double peeked through kill holes from the north and south at the same time anymore. But some walls have also been turned soft. The master bedroom now has two soft wall sections leading outside, one in the north and one in the south, and the walk-in and car room also have brand new sections of breachable wall that connect to the new part of the building and offer some great rotation opportunities. I have to say that I find the new external soft walls in the master bedroom quite interesting since they allow for exciting battles to take place between the two teams. On defense, you can either choose to reinforce these sections, which could lead to bandit tricking battles, or you could just straight up leave these sections soft or even open them up during the prep phase to contest these areas. It's up to you. 
Especially the southern wall can provide a chance for some sneaky early runouts that could allow you to catch attackers as they move in from the side street spawn in the southeast. Another neat thing you can do from the master bedroom now is to open up parts of the floor to get sightlines all the way down into garage. If you open up a hole just in front of the chair here, and you then also open up the brand new hatch in the dining room below, you get a really good view of anyone trying to push in through the new garage entrance door all the way in the basement, and there is almost nothing that the attackers can do to fight back. If you turn around and shoot open the floor towards the rug under the bed, and also make sure that you have enough of the dining room floor open, you can then deny any opportunity for the attackers of planting next to the bulletproof cabinet just inside the garage. Of course, both of these angles can also be used directly from the dining room below, but going across two floors is safer and can make for some extra spicy kills. Last but not least, the entire floor in car room has been turned into wood and can now offer some great angles down into the back stairs hallway. You can watch the stairs themselves, the door to the new music room to the south, the door east to the kitchen, and even north to the game room if you go through this section of the wall here. This makes the car room a great place to limit access to the back stairs and can be used by both defenders and attackers. This video is sponsored by Opera GX, the world's first internet browser built specifically for gamers. Ever since the lockdown, when I'm done researching Rainbow Six topics for the day, my evenings involve playing a nice relaxing single player game and in parallel I'll always have a Twitch stream running on my second monitor and Opera GX is perfect for this kind of activity. Not only does it come with Twitch directly integrated into the browser, but it also has some really handy settings under the GX control tab. Here you can set limits on the max network bandwidth, RAM and CPU usage the browser is allowed to take up, which ensures that you always have enough resources for gaming, working, studying or whatever else you're doing on your PC. With a single click you can even pop out any video on any website and then continue working or browsing elsewhere. But Opera GX has so much more to offer. Beyond Twitch, you can also customize your experience with all kinds of Opera extensions, plus Chrome extensions are compatible too. Fancy free VPN? Just activate the Opera VPN extension and bang, that's there as well. A final feature that I really like about Opera GX is the GX Corner. This awesome gaming extension includes info on the latest games releases, free games on offer and a deals aggregator. Plus, you also get to see the latest gaming news all neatly brought together for you in one place. And honestly, I could go on for longer, but this is a Rainbow Six video after all, and we need to get back on topic. So, use the link in the description below to check out Opera GX, and since it's completely free, why not download it and try it out for yourself? If you're watching on a mobile device, that's perfectly fine. You can use the same link and if you leave your email, Opera will send you a handy download link which you can use on your PC later on. And now, back to Siege. It's deceptive how even the rooms that don't really look as if they've been changed at all are actually quite different once you take a closer look. But those are just these subtle changes. There are some more pronounced differences at the front of the house. The workshop is now called the Pink Room and there are several important tactical changes that we need to be aware of. In terms of its footprint, the room has been expanded out to the east over the top of the lobby while completely absorbing the part of the hallway that used to be there. Instead of that landing, the Pink Room now has its very own walk-in closet with reinforceable walls to the north and south. From a tactical perspective, one of the most important changes to this section of the map is that the floor is now completely soft, which allows you to create sight lines to and from the old living room below, which is now called Game Room, and also to and from the lobby. If you want to get really creative, you can even create sightlines all the way down into gym and garage in the basement. 
But if you're on attack, the soft floor can definitely work in your favor. Whenever the pink room is the objective, you will often find a defender trying to anchor in the reinforced walk-in, maybe with a deployable shield in the doorway. This is a pretty good spot to sit because it allows you to cover the back stairs through the soft wall and both windows of the room. The problem is that all it takes for the attackers to dislodge you is someone in the game room below with a hand grenade and a bit of timing. Alternatively, any soft breaches such as Ash, Sophia or Buck can also make a real nuisance of themselves from below. The other tactical considerations for the pink room are that several of the walls have been solidified and can no longer be breached, specifically the east-west facing walls and a small section next to the south facing door. And the large window in the north has been bricked up in exchange for two new smaller windows, one in the northwest facing the front of the house and one in the southwest facing the treehouse. The house has also been expanded to the north. Instead of the outside roof and the iconic yet sometimes pretty frustrating front window, there is now a bathroom hallway which creates a rotation opportunity between the old bathroom and the pink room. Take care when using this hallway as a defender though because the attackers can contest this area through a window that leads onto the roof outside the bathroom. Moving on to the other large area of remodeling on the second floor of the house, in the south there are two new rooms, the playroom attached to the car room in the west and the reading room attached to the master bedroom over in the east. The playroom is a pretty simple room, one window, two doorways and only a relatively small section of soft wall that can be used to create access to the car room. The window leads out onto the second floor back porch and can be used for jump outs to contest the treehouse as mentioned earlier or also to fight anyone trying to get into the reading room through the second window connected to the porch. The official minimap tells us that the floor in the playroom is completely destructible but a closer examination reveals that this is a bold faced lie. Sure, most of the floor is breachable, but the section immediately under the window is not, thereby denying the defenders the opportunity of setting up a kill hole in the ceiling below in order to ambush unsuspecting attackers. Nevertheless, the rest of the floor does allow you to create valuable sightlines down onto every doorway that leads into the music room below, as well as being able to fight anyone in the music room itself. If you shoot open the floor here, you can shoot the legs of anyone trying to come in through the south facing door in the music room and from here you get a perfect sight line to the north and the door leading to the back stairs. The metal bars make holding the door over in the east a little harder but you can still get a perfectly usable sight line from here. If you're attacking and trying to contest the two new rooms on the first floor, make sure to drone out the top floor and if necessary clear this room out before making a move below. Final section on the top floor is the reading room and the brand new red stairs. This room has two doors and two windows with a breachable section of wall in the northwestern corner. We already mentioned the window in the south that leads to the porch. If you're on attack, you might be tempted to contest this window or even to try and enter through it, but I would recommend against attempting anything like that. Because of the wall immediately opposite the window, you have a very poor view of the reading room itself and won't be able to cover the stairs properly. The only useful thing you can do from here really is to try and throw a grenade or two over the half wall which may or may not even be able to do anything. Jumping in here is also very dangerous because you can be simultaneously contested from the left and right. For defenders, holding this window is pretty easy. You are relatively safe in the reading room and as soon as the window is opened, you can lob a nitro cell over the wall for a chance at an easy frag. The east window is also very useful for defenders to attempt to keep the reading room balcony clear and to stop any attempt at opening up the soft wall into master bedroom. You can even attempt an early jump out onto this balcony, similar to coming through the master bedroom wall, in the hope of getting a spawn kill on an attacker who may be distracted by trying to take out the southeast default cam. As with almost every single part of the top floor, this room also has wall-to-wall -wall breachable floors and again, this can allow you to set up kill holes to cover every single doorway into the TV room below. Shoot here to get a line of sight onto the doorway that leads west into the music room. Shoot here to cover the doorway east leading to connector at the bottom of the red stairs. 
or most importantly of all, open up a tiny bit of floor under the window here to cover the back entrance. Being able to cover both of the entrances leading onto the first floor porch from above is really valuable and just like I mentioned with the game room, if you're on attack you need to check the top floor before attempting to push into the TV room from the south. And finally, hatches on the second floor. As you can see, they are exactly where they used to be and for the most part offer exactly the same access and lines of sight as before. This little half wall here in the master bedroom does make it a little bit more difficult to see to the north, but apart from that, all stays the same. There you go, some of the best defensive angles from the top floor of the new house map. Keep your eyes peeled for follow up videos with tips on the rest of the map, and for now, many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.